Hello and welcome to Finite Element Analysis Contact. And today we are going to take a quick look at the contact types. My name is Mike Fiedler. I'm a designated support specialist with Autodesk. And what we are going to do is move over to Inventor Nastran and we'll take a look at a simple assembly and explore some of the different types of contact. So let's go ahead and do that now. Here we are inside of Inventor Nastran, and I have a simple assembly. As I mentioned, this trailer hitch assembly will be uploaded so that you can access it. And I've imported the geometry already, or opened the geometry in the Nastran workspace, and you can see that we have a couple different parts. We have the ball, we have the hitch itself, we have the receiver, and then we have a pin and I've meshed it coarsely just so we can run the analysis rather quickly and I've added the contact into the assembly. So because it is an assembly we do have to have contact and currently all the various contacts in this assembly are just set to bonded. We will have a subsequent video where we go over with a different assembly the full start to end analysis including setting up some type of contact. But if I right click and I say edit, you can see that right now all the various contacts between the parts in this assembly are currently set to bonded. And we'll say OK to that. And let's just go ahead and run that real quick. I should mention as far as loads and constraints, we have the back face of the receiver fixed and then I have a load uh, on the ball and again everything is currently set to bonded so you can see that that runs relatively quick and if we take a look at the model in our results so uh, we can kind of see from the results of this assembly that it is a bonded type of analysis so again we have this end completely fixed but the receiver is bonded to the pin and likewise the receiver is bonded to the uh, hitch itself and also the hitch to the pin so on so part to part to part along down this chain we have all the parts bonded which means that they cannot pull apart and they cannot pass through one another uh, there's no sliding allowed so you know given the load that we have on this we get a, a bit of a hinging effect here and we see the the max stress occurring here on the hitch itself um, where the the geometry changes direction here kind of a radius so that is the result that we see with this entirely bonded right and uh, you may have noticed whenever the solution uh, began to proceed and, and maybe I'll jump into the output here real quick uh, as we go through that um, because we have defined some sort of contact to it we have contact segments so the program does need to add contact segments for each one of those surface interactions that it sees. Even though they are bonded, meaning they're not allowed to slide, or again, they can't pull apart, can't pass through one another, the program still needs to have contact segments in order to track the interface between those, those mating surfaces. So um, that does add to the solution time. So when we start to set up our analysis, or even when we review the results of our first analysis, we might ask ourselves, is this really what's going on uh, with the model, and, and should I change it? In this particular case, maybe we decide that we do want to change it. So let's consider what's going on. So for instance, the ball here is threaded into the hitch, and if I rotate it around, you can see that there's a nut there. So maybe that one's OK to consider uh, as a bonded type of uh, connection but really the hitch slides into the receiver right and then it's just the pin going through here that keeps the connection between the receiver and the hitch and then likewise the pin is generally slid in and then there's like a cotter pin or something similar to to maintain the the pin through that hole so in that case uh, we might say to ourselves that the bonded connection is is not appropriate so as far as changing them I'm gonna change all of them except for the one surface contact that is the hitch ball I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as as bonded and I'll just shift select all the other contacts and we're gonna change those to a 
a different type of contact. So let's go to edit. And from the pull down menu, there are all the different types of contacts. So separation is the fully general. It's allowed to slide. It's allowed to pull apart. Uh, it just prevents parts from passing through one another. And then we have the contact type that we just used, the bonded, which is the same as a, a fully fixed uh, surfaces between adjacent parts. And then you have kind of the uh, specialty version of the separation. There's the sliding no separation. So it's just allowing sliding contact, but again, it will not allow the, the parts to separate. And then the inverse of that says, I'm, a, I'm going to allow separation, but I don't want to see the parts sliding. Underneath that, you have your offset bonded. So this is generally utilized in the case where you have gaps between parts, generally arises in a weld mint. So when people have a 3D CAD assembly, uh, and maybe there's gaps between the parts because in the final product, we're going to weld between those different parts. So in those cases, you can use an offset bonded in conjunction with specifying your max activation distance to, to account for the gaps between the parts. And then you have different shrink fit options uh, whenever there are interference and you're trying to solve for what those interferences are between the parts, see what the stresses are and the displacements as a result of that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make it fully general. So I'm going to set it to separation and we'll say OK. And when I do that, you notice that the symbol over here in the menu tree is a little bit different than what the bonded one is, just to let me know that uh, there's some difference in my setup here. And at that point, we can just go ahead and run the simulation again. So this one's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, I still have the same number of, of contacts that it'll do between the same number of contact segments between the parts. Um, but because the program is going to uh, allow for the ability for it to slide or for parts to pull apart, uh, it needs to get into an iterative process in order to determine, you know, is it trying to a slide, in which case to allow that if they're trying to penetrate to prevent that. Um, and of course, you know, if they're going to pull apart, it has to allow that as well. So it does become an iterative solution. And you can see uh, in the output that it was going through the iterations right then. And of course, overall, that analysis takes a little bit longer. And from that, you know, as a result of changing up the contacts, perhaps some fashion that is more representative of what the real world geometry will do, we can see that we have even impacted the, the location of the max stress. So we still have stresses in this region, but it's no longer the location of our max stress. And our max stress now occurs uh, in the pin region where the pin comes into contact uh, with the hitch. So again, being that we're fixed back here on the receiver and we're loading up the hitch ball, the hitch ball is bonded to the hitch. So the hitch is going to want to slide forward a little bit. As it slides forward, it makes contact with the pin. And so the pin then comes into contact with the receiver on one side. So we can see that it's loading up and we're getting some stress on that side. And you can see if we zoom in here, because it is separation contact, it allows the pin to pull away from the receiver here. So we're even seeing a gap there. So this is probably a little more representative of what will actually happen uh, with the real world condition. So that's why we have all the different types of contact there so that we can set up our model appropriately and it will have an impact on your results in, in most cases. So just be aware of that. I'm going to leave you with one final note. Uh, I did mesh this rather coarsely. I believe I meshed this model at uh, either a quarter of an inch or half an inch um, so that we can solve it in real time rather quickly. But if you do end up downloading this model and, and you run a finer mesh on it, you should still see the separation here. Presuming that you use separation contact, you should still see stresses develop on this side. Uh, but the maximum stress will actually occur uh, in the radius here where the hitches build up uh, around the ball. So we have meshed the model so coarsely in this particular case that we haven't captured that detail. So uh, that's another good point to make sure that your, your model's always adequately meshed. So hopefully that helps to provide a little bit of information. And again, uh, in the upcoming video, we will go through more detail on the entire setup process of an assembly start to finish. Okay, thank you.